So yesterday's uh, sermon kind of uh, caused a kind of controversy for me and between some other people. And I want to go ahead and clear some things up on why we believe in hyper grace or why I'm so-called hyper grace. Last night, um, I got to join some live streams. Uh, when I was on Praise I Am, uh, Praise, uh, I think I saying Praise I Am, and then Layman said, we're going to ask some questions. I think me and I'm going to have a, a formal debate or a discussion about about the doctrine. I just got to figure out when I can do it and email some people, email that brother about it. But, um, you know, I want to just make this clear why I believe in hyper grace. And let me make this clear watching hyper grace and free grace are completely different. That's a win. You got that, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We heard it. <laughs> and no, it, it's a win. It's a win because I've been fighting for that for a while. So, uh, the next split that's going to have, there's going to be another split within free grace. That's essentially what's going to happen. People that have been claiming free grace, but are actually hyper. They're going to come out. They're going to split. Okay. There's more stuff that's going to occur. Okay. Let me explain what I mean. It's in free grace theology. What it teaches, right? It teaches, um, you know, yes, salvation's by grace. We agree, you know, free, the free gift of eternal life. What free grace theology teaches teaches that um, it goes over a lot more than just uh, salvation. It has a lot of things about doctrine. Okay, but so he's paraphrasing what I was saying last night on Praise the Channel. That yeah, free grace and, and I watched this, and there's several points I disagree with. But go ahead, Charles. Okay, uh, it teaches they have to confess your sins and maintain fellowship. We don't believe that. Okay, mm -hmm. now keep this in mind. Yeah, that I would I'm, say that's a very uh, like number one point of controversy or distinction between the two movements right yeah well see this is the thing I, i'm willing to consider the possibility that our fellowship is never broken it's strained like in a relationship you know uh, but then again if you're going to use a relationship metaphor there's times whenever your spouse is not talking to you at all you know yeah so uh but so I mean, there's times when it's distance. There's times when it's close. I'm f I would rather use it in a relational type way, intimacy type way, than to use an on and off switch. Really. Yes. Uh, and and free grace is changing in that area. Okay. Uh, right. Let me put it this way then, Charles. Uh, the right. on off switch, the dimmer. Um, you know, remember I always say Amos 3.3, 3, if two are not one mind, how can they walk together? Cl yeah. Clearly, if we're not in doctrinal fellowship with God, we're not even going to understand how to walk with him in good right. conscience. But also right. good conscience is a separate issue. But my point, I told these guys, some of these guys I was talking to, these hyper grace guys, is that you can offend someone who loves you deeply. It doesn't mean that they're going to beat you or torture you. Right. There, exactly. There can be an offense. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so maybe maybe to clarify this, because it sounds like, well, you can strain your fellowship, you can maintain your fellowship, and some might disagree. Maybe to clarify what, what we would say is, does 1 John 1, 9 apply to believers, or is it a way to evangelize unbelievers? Or, or Yeah, you know? that's one of the issues, but I don't think that doctrine is only on 1 John 1, 9. The Jews yeah. worshipped in uh, Psalms 32. Psalms 32 describes the divine chastisement of the Lord. It describes uh, what happens when you're not confessing. Now, given it is talking about David underneath the theocracy of Israel, and he is a king, and he's held to a higher standard. But I think principles can be drawn from that. So my point is, is that the reason that the 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 New Testament doesn't focus on teaching about confession of sin. Is because it all rolled forward. You know, it's already assumed. Everybody knew it. The Jews were very emotional worshipers, you know, in their culture. So to think that uh, that these Jewish Christians were not worshiping in a way that was similar to how they worshiped before they met Christ is insane. So confession was already part of it. And for those that say it's not, they're trying to either use dispensationalism or maybe even a hyper dispensationalism to do it, you know, and I don't think it works. All right. 
um, that you have to, um, you know, work or God's mad at you. Or you, you see the that's horrible language, ain't it? Yeah, I don't agree with that at all. I, and I told them that. I, and God, so he's, God can, he's God not, could be disappointed in us, but why? Why it, would he? Why would he be angry with you in the sense? Right. Of, First off, emotions are anthropopathism in the Bible. Right. You know. So I mean, he's not representing the position correctly. You know. And and I'm doing these I'm doing this hyper grace series so that when he does formally debate me, he will know exactly what we hold to, you know, and how much work we're doing in this. Also, I mean, there's plenty of instances within God's word where God becomes mad, becomes angry as a result of his people committing sins and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, but I think it, that's it's, what he's talking about. It's temporal wrath and divine discipline. But yeah, you make up a good point because they deny God divinely disciplines you as well. Oh my okay. gosh! As I'm discipline you, or you know, we don't we don't agree with that, right? We don't agree with that, right? Okay, so essentially, what happens right now is this: it's VR Grace Christian Community. So essentially, what I think it is is that when he wanted to do this VR church, he included his church, and he's a member of this church. Grace Com Christian Community. So let's type that in. Grace Christian Community Church. Who's it going to be? No, not fellowship. Can you not follow instructions, robot? Just because I spell it wrong, they want to Corpus Christi. All right, but let me just make it, let me make it easy. All right, so their church is in North Carolina. Is it the same church? You got Grace Fellowship Church. I don't know if it's the same one. But oh, anyway, this this church that he goes to, I don't know if it's if it's, it's the same as Greg Jackson's church or if it's separate. But look at the bottom in the comments. Yeah. Well, Robert ge keeps getting kicked out of church. He got kicked out of this fellowship too. Who's Robert? Uh, the Robert Jenkins. He he got kicked out. You need to add him back. Oh, he was in that group, Robert. No, no, no. I'm no, having... he's staying in here. In here. Yeah. <laughs> oh. There you go. Oh. Who's Robert Jenkins? <laughs> I thought you were. You were really, Robert. Charles. Uh, really, Mr. Jennings. <laughs> look, no, look, just... look, look. So look, I put a comment under this video. Actually, I put a comment. I, I saw the Greg Jackson, right, right here. Grace is by definition hyperbounding. It's also free. And he's got a video addressing this, and we'll look at that too, the same way. So I said, look what I said, guys. Are you willing to formally debate so that we can clearly differentiate between free grace and hyper grace? So I called out Greg Jackson, okay? Because evidently, in some type of way, he has a connection to Brandon. So I don't know if they're at the same church and this is an extension of his ministry and that they're the ones that are determining like what, what he speaks and, and the parameters by he does things. I don't know how that works. But uh, this video, which we'll play in a minute, is, is also kind of interesting as well. But we'll come back to that one. All right, so go back up. And what hyper grace believe, believes in, what I believe in, and is that we're right with God by faith. The moment we believe the gospel, and then the second we believe what Christ did for us, we're saved, justified, sanctified, right with God. We're in fellowship with Him, no matter what. And we believe what you know what First John is talking about is just. So we're in fellowship with Him, no matter what. Except Number one, when, except when we turn our backs on Him. Yeah, but I mean, there there are times you can have a positional fellowship, 
But the question is, what about experiential fellowship? Yeah, Typically, I mean. we say cliches like union versus communion, you know? To um, discern between those who, who embrace Christ's messages and those who are unbelieving anti-Christ. Whoa. First John is talking about to discern between those who embrace Christ's message and those who are unbelieving any Christ. Yeah, they call it the sin of Cain, not loving your brother. Yeah, well, if he's going to go down that route, then he's just like sniffing the Pharisees. Well, um, my understanding is we need. And to if he goes down that route, then then he's worse than free. He's not only is he hyper grace, he's not even hyper grace. He's gone. He's well, yeah, gone. they would be. They, yeah, they wouldn't be free grace in any. But Charles, let me clarify before you continue. Sorry. All right, go ahead. He there was a clarification on that guy said it was in the flesh. So we need to get clarification on sniffing. He's okay. saying you could do it in your flesh and still be saved. So that that's the contention. Well, okay. Well, try to talk to sniffing because I don't have any connection with them right now. Okay. So we don't think First John's mostly about, um, you know, when it says confess there, it's a knowledge. That's the, I think the Greek word for that is knowledge. And that's for those who embrace Christ's message. Okay. And, and, what we believe about the Christian life too in the walk, right? A lot of free gracers believe um, we go back to the law of Christ. Um, uh, How can we go back to the law of Christ? You see what he did there? He conflates the Mosaic law with the law of Christ and then says we go back to the law of Christ. Now, when you believe the gospel, you're underneath a new law for sanctification instructions every time you give a command or an exhortation in scripture so that's one issue that's the problem there they don't believe that they're underneath any type of law but yeah here he is preaching that's self-refuting that means he's putting his audience underneath the law saying don't believe anybody that's underneath says they're underneath the law uh i uh, we don't believe that right we we were dead to the law we're part of the everlasting covenant right so again what does that mean? We're not yeah, we part need, of the we new, need, we need clarification not, on that, Charles, too. We're not part of the new covenant. Okay, well, fine. If you want to if you don't want to claim the new covenant's in operation right now, okay, that's at least a dispensational concept. But look what he says. We're part of the everlasting covenant. Well, what is the everlasting covenant? Is it the Abrahamic covenant? If it is, then that includes the new covenant. Uh but probably what's going on is this is probably where they're compromising and we're talking about a covenant of redemption and covenant theology. See what I'm saying? And they're only a matter of time before they're linked up with destroying the works of the devil. He says he don't want to have nothing to do with Calvinists, but he's already assuming certain things. He's assuming that these covenants have to do with salvation. The everlasting covenant he's saying is everlasting life. He's being that reductionistic, it appears. We're not part of that new covenant. We're part of the everlasting covenant, and this is all just. And this is the this is the difference between free grace and hyper grace. Okay, and so there's no there's nothing in the books, nothing in any theological textbook that I owe of that ever uses this language here. This is uncharted territory in his claims right here. Okay. Well, in our church, we do believe in We believe that you don't have to maintain fellowship with God by confession of sins. You're right with God by faith. Now, there's nothing wrong with telling God. So what if you don't have faith? There's nothing wrong with telling God you're sorry. Okay? God, you're sorry. But again, you cannot lose your fellowship. So why are you telling God you're sorry? Look, look what he says here, Mark. You cannot lose your fellowship. He lives inside of you. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit and the filling ministry of the Holy Spirit are two different things. Indwelling is his promise to always live within you, and it gives you the potential. But if you're not filled, if you're not underneath the influence of the Spirit, according to five eighteen, then then you're not, you're not going to be you're going to be walking in the flesh. You're not going to be walking according to the Spirit. Right. So you, see, he, he, you see what's he, going on? They're com they're conflating categories here. Yeah, and here's Fellowship the bottom line. And I, to him. I, I told him this the other day. This is the bottom line. Uh, you know, before before the law came, we had conscience, right? And, and I think David Benjamin holds this some form of dispensationalism, but I'm not sure exactly how he breaks it down. But the bottom line is that 
if you're not walking in the spirit uh, and you never walk again in the spirit, you're never going to be able to go. In fact, you're going to be probably go backwards to the worst case scenario of apostasy. Right. Mm -hmm. So even if you say you don't talk about your end of it, you know, I get that you commit so many sins a day that you're not even aware of. And that that's not our point. The point is like what you consciously know about your conscience towards God. But if you're not all, if you're not in the spirit at all, ever, um, the problem is you're never even going to know who you are anymore, right? You're, you're going to forget who you are. Okay. So the end result's the same, Charles. Do you see my point? No matter what yeah. language you want to use, if you never are in the spirit, in free grace or hyper grace, you are eventually going to go backwards and, like Peter said, be worse than your first state because you're going to be capable of things you never were before as an unbeliever. So well, my, my point is we need to clarify, like, well, well, dude, if you're never in fellowship with God by the spirit, you're yeah. you're going to forget who you are and you're going to be in trouble in the sense of not knowing who you are well yeah and then the other thing is is number one i believe that people start out in fellowship with the spirit when they yeah yeah I'm, they yeah I'm talking about as believers uh the word you know everybody says there's no i know that i don't want to go on a tangent but everybody says all oh, free grace who cares nothing me i'll tell you what uh try to try to forget like say say to god i hey, god make me forget my family and my love for them and all that stuff. Because that's what happens when we're not in fellowship with God. We forget who he is. We don't care who he is. And our worst state is 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 horrible. Our well, latter state is horrible if we don't yeah, if we live but, like that. Yeah, but you're you're talking to some you're talking as someone who struggles with the flesh. These guys usually are too prideful and arrogant, you know, to even admit these things. I'm talking yeah. about the Lord the Lordship. And then you got these guys that are super sensitive and they don't want to face themselves, you know. And so that got to this denial concept of things. Yeah. What I will say about, you know, this guy, he seems kind of young and, right. he, you know, he's conflating terms. But I'm sure, you know, if I was in a debate with you or if I was making a video, I would probably conflate a few terms just because. Right. Yeah, I haven't been to seminary, so I can forgive him for some of this. Well, oh, of more... course, yeah, yeah. We're doing this so that he can get better. We're not just yeah. yeah. He's already admitted he's in a, in a learning uh, mode. You know, he doesn't claim to have oh, okay. all the, the views of hyper yeah. grace down. But yeah. I want great. I want great Jan Jackson to actually interact. You know. Yeah. Because what it looks like he's doing. Well, I'll show. I'll wait till you see the next video. Um, but anyway, you fellowship, you live society, Christ live within you, man. We're dead to the lost. We okay. Here he goes. You're he lives inside of you. Christ lives in you, amen. We're dead to the lost. We live unto God. And so, um, I think yesterday's sermon was very, very contrary. I had to remove it because I got some comments from sister from a sister. Why well, I don't want her to get, to get the wrong idea and uh, talk. So he got a comment from one person and he removed it. All right. But the thing is, is why was it taken down? It was a, it was all the, the, the video was saying was that, uh, about the free grace wars, you know, that we're going to have discussions and we're going to talk about these things and we're willing to go where the truth was at. I received the, the, a very positive. So what I'm trying to say is not the free grace people that are bothered by it. Is that what you're saying, Mark? It was the hyper grace that were bothered by it. Yeah, my understanding. Again, I'm trying to be gracious because I I like these guys. I I believe they're brothers. I care for them, and so yeah, it's. I think on their end, their their viewpoint is they don't want to get bewitched. You know what I mean? They think if we're in false doctrine, you and I, uh, that it's going to cause them to stumble and fall and become you know kind of like Dude was saying the other day. Remember, Dude? Yeah, yeah. Was focusing I, I got... on sin, right? Yeah. And so they're just trying to protect. But my point is, I told Brandon, you know, you may be alone, uh, and and you know, you know, you may find yourself alone at some doctrines, and you got to be willing to be alone and suffer, if you want to know truth. And so, you know, that's the journey you say you're on, and he says he's on that journey to know truth. We're, you know, we're all trying to figure it out. But sometimes, man, it gets hard if you don't want to compromise. Yeah, it's I think lonely. This is probably reflecting some inward drama within the camp because it seems like I I haven't looked at the video but i'm getting the impression that some people want a big tent movement where hyper grace and free grace are conflated and some people want their small tent movement where you know that's my individual 
you know, yes. yeah. Yep. So we we've, we've tried to enter we've tried to fellowship with different people that are held to this and they will not do it. You know, mm -hmm. they always make it an issue. I thought you you wanted the free grace movement to be more of a big tent movement. Or no? I want uh, well, because of the doctrine of sanctification, Charles is saying they're not technically free grace. Well, here, this is really what I want. This might sound weird, but I want a big tent so that we can have boxing matches underneath the big tent. Like the Reformation, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Church, church council stuff. I don't want superficialness. I want us to deal with our issues in a way where we can learn and grow in maturity with that. Now, not everybody's going to do that, but doing the Cold War approach is not working anymore, you know, mm -hmm. and where people huddle up and, and talk about things. So, yeah, yeah. Charles, let me be transparent for a moment about this. How much have you watched of, say, David Benjamin? Have you watched any of his videos at all? Or? Not, not enough. Okay, I've watched him for, I used to watch him roughly, I'd say, a year and a half to two years. I watched him a lot. And I agree with like a ton of what he says, to be honest with you. It's that difference in that Galatian air thing. That's where we were. That's where we were starting to butt heads at in my mind. You know, I never talked to him or anything. Um, but there's a lot of what he says that sounds good and dispensational, uh, dispensationally accurate. But definitely it comes down to that Galatian air because he it seemed like he was moving Charles to the point of saying that is the position that includes the position of the gospel. And right? he currently doesn't even believe James is the word of God. I'm not sure about that part. Whoa, I'm, he said that? Uh, yeah, I was sent I was sent the video. He said I have oh, a gotcha. I have a unique view on the gospel of James. I'll try to find right, that. Right, right. 65 books or less? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, I mean what he's basically what he's trying to say is that James is, has doctrinal error. I think well, so my church members after the service let them know the wrong idea it was very a very confusing sermon anyway yesterday and, and it's been rough on us over here too if it's a really confusing sermon you should have never preached it this is something he's got to learn you can't just be in a sermon and winging things if you're barely starting out in the beginning you need to write your sermons out you need to you need to make sure that every word that you say is intentional Especially when you have a public ministry where what you say is going to be turned into sound bites. And it was kind of my fault. Anyway, yeah, no. the blood of Jesus moving forward. Anyway, um, but yeah, I, I really want to defend our position. You know, keep preaching Christ and Him crucified, that we're in, we're, we got, we're complete in Him, that He's our sanctification, righteousness. And that's the other topic. Um, that's the difference between us and free grace is about sanctification. They think there's two types of sanctification. Uh, Three types. Sanctification and the experimental. I can't pronounce the word. I don't know how to pronounce it. Sanctification. What we believe is that no, Christ is our sanctification, right? When we see verses like in first. Well, if Christ is your sanctification, is that true just positionally or is that also true experientially? He's attacking the chart. Yeah, he is. And says yeah. this is the God, even your sanctification. Well, who's our sanctification? Christ is our sanctification. And what is the state of fornication? How do we do that? We do it through Christ by walking in the Spirit. Yeah, what's your point? We believe the same thing. Right, but they will say a lot of them will say no. Express sanctifications, you you're going away from sin and you're trying your best to stay away from it. No, we don't. Well, I also wanted to say, you know, it's not just getting sound bites; it's also that you're, um, you know, going to be judged more strictly by God. You know, James. Well, yeah. I guess he he doesn't believe James or. Uh, so maybe that verse. Well, this guy may believe James, but I'm just saying David Benjamin yeah. has issues with James. But yeah, so the thing is, is that my typical approach is I don't say, oh, I got to avoid sinning. That I focus on oh, what can I share? What can I study? What can I help someone with? So this is this is. This is a total straw man. I mean, there might be a few statements that he says are true in here, but and you know them being sin conscience rather than sun conscience, right? Anyway, yeah, I've used that cliche before, but all right, that's Charles, what I'm they're using the same arguments we've used against us. That's what's happening.
Go ahead, uh, Mark. Yeah, I, I was just going to say there are, what is it? Uh, I know of, <coughs> of course, NIFB and then IFB. Those, some of those people, if they're under free grace umbrella, there could be some of those charges labeled towards them because uh, I know for a fact some of these people's background was in there. Keep that in consideration. No, no, so, I, I know. But are they free okay. grace? Uh, well, generally speaking, those people say you can't apostatize, and I don't want to start another tangent. Yeah. I would yeah. say that's not technically. But well, they just, do. You know what? I'll do, just leave that for later. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they have Romans 10, 9 through 13. And, you know, if you talk to them, they're not very nice people, especially. So, you know. Yeah. Um, All right. Let's just say, let me just say this, Joe. Classically, uh, this is just, let's just say classically, okay, for now. If you believe that a person can't uh, finally end in the state of apostasy, isn't that classically? I'm mean, using air quotes you can't see. Not free grace. Maybe. I, I had to have proof. I need to have more. Com I, the, I need to see more free grace writings. Like, I need to see stuff from Schaefer. I need to see stuff from Ryrie. I need to see, you know, I. I can tell you, I'm pretty sure they believe that, but I can't prove it right now. You know what I mean? Right. So if that's the case, then you have another division. But, like, again, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not like people aren't saved, but we just can't classify each other the same way. Right, right. Hey, these are disagreements that, that stuff from, from free grace and hyper grace. Um, you know, the only thing we agree on is about salvation. That's faith alone and Christ alone. But when it comes to the Christian walk, when it comes to Christian living, when it comes to fellowship, it's some completely different. He didn't want to say the word sanctification. But what does all that have to do with? Sanctification is a walk. Christian living is a walk. Fellowship, it's it's sanctification. Um, you know, I tried to make a plea deal yesterday with that video. Okay, I tried to make a... Uh... That's, why they, that's why they took it down. Because that was my impression. He's like, okay, he's willing to interact with us and willing to go with the truth. But whether I don't know if it was tied to, to uh, an actual church or whether this is just discord stuff, but whoever it was, they opposed him and they made him take it down. Basically is what happened. Uh, I, I want us to discuss. I want us to, to get this out, but it's, I guess it won't happen. I'll... You hear that? He wants to talk about it. He wants to engage in these things, but he says, I guess it won't happen. Wait till he finds out whenever they say, we don't want you debating uh, Layman Seminary or we don't want you talking to Layman Seminary or anybody associated with them. I guarantee you they'll do that. Uh, I don't know. Lord willing, it will. Lord willing, we can figure it out. Um, hopefully, I'm going to keep joining these live streams and maybe to defend our position the best way. See that? Hopefully. He doesn't even, ha he doesn't even have assurance that he's going to be able to use his own free will to uh engage if if he made this ministry as part of a church and he wants to continue his ministry uh and 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 be free to do what he needs to do to uh, go with truth or whatever then he should just establish his ministry separate from the church because if if the church if this is a real church they're gonna want all these uh, criteria to be on him, and he's and they're just gonna hold him back, you know, because the church don't know how to deal with the online Discord world or, or social. Even the church that's active in social media doesn't know how to deal with that. But I can, um, but yeah, I really do appreciate your prayers and um, uh, yeah, all of it. All right, God bless. Thanks for watching, and um, yeah.